ZBrush is one of those softwares that has so many tools, so many menus, and so many things that it's almost impossible to know absolutely everything. So in this video, I'm going to show you five tools that I think are relatively hidden. Some of them are a little bit more well known than others, but I'm sure that no matter if you're a beginner or an expert or you've been doing ZBrush for a while, you might find something interesting in this couple of tips. So let's go. The first brush that we're going to talk about is one that doesn't get mentioned a lot, and it's this one called the Mesh Balloon. Now, this one's particularly useful because it allows us to create very interesting shapes very quick. You access it by pressing Control. It's one of those control brushes you're going to find right here. I, I guess this is why one of the reasons why it doesn't get talked as much. But yeah, Mesh Balloon. So very simple to use. If you're on a side view, for instance, and you press Control, you can draw the shape, right? And whatever we draw is going to be ballooned into this thing right there. So as you can see, now we have this huge volume that we can start using to generate whatever it is you want. So let's say we want to do a neck, for instance, right? Or the torso. Well, you're going to draw and then you're going to press shift before releasing and you're going to get a cylindrical shape. So again, it's a nice little tool that we can use to quickly generate volumes and start like ideating whatever it is we want to create. It has a couple of other neat tools. For instance, if we draw this thing and we don't press shift, you're going to get two volumes right on the side. So this is especially useful. If you want to create something that's like a mirror thing. I don't know, like imagine we're doing some bunny ears or something like that. We can very quickly create that volume instead of having to grab a sphere and just like push it and pull it all the way around. Now, here's a couple of interesting things about the mesh balloon. The first one is if you draw and you modify the intensity of the element, the shape of the object will change. So if you want thinner elements instead of like this very blobby effects, make sure to press control, lower the intensity of your C-Dep right there. And when you draw, you're going to get things that look a little bit more like fins, right? Like you can probably imagine doing some sort of like fish or something with this element. The other thing that's very interesting about this thing is once we draw a shape, we can actually control and all this to remove elements from it. So again, if we go back here, we draw something with shift that and then without changing the mask on this thing, we press control, draw, and then press alt, we're going to go straight through it. Remember how cutting holes can be a little bit difficult? Well, this is actually a pretty handy way to get there. Now, in the topic of generating meshes to start with, right, to like get them to the next level, we can actually use this thing called Shadowbox. I mentioned this not too long ago in one of our like shorts, but Shadowbox is a way to very quickly generate interesting shapes that might be a little bit difficult to do, again, by hand. In order to access Shadowbox, you need to go to the geometry menu, so you need to be in an active subtool, and then go here to Shadowbox. We select the resolution that we want. I'm going to go with the highest, and I'm going to hit Shadowbox. And we're going to get a new area where we can draw different shapes. So I'm going to clear the mask. And now if I, for instance, draw something right here, you can see a new shape is going to be created right there. But if I subtract from the mask, that subtraction is going to be transferred into the element. And then if we go to the top part, for instance, we can draw something a little bit different right here. We can use a cube or whatever it is we want. We're going to be generating very, very complex shapes. One of the ways I like to use this tool quite a bit is by changing my mask to something like mask erect. And we can start generating things similar to what we'd see with like booleans. So for instance, we can do that that let's delete like a little like section right there let's go here to the top let's add a couple of blocks like here and here right and then let's remove a little bit of volume again try doing this shape without the help of like traditional poly modeling and it's going to be very very difficult the cool thing is at any point we can add like a bunch of crazy shapes for instance let's go with a circle right here and if we want a circle to be going through both directions we can do something like that and look at that that looks very very sick then we can, for instance, I don't know, remove a section from here. And again, it's kind of similar to working with Vooleans. It's not exactly Vooleans, right? It's this shadows that we're projecting into the planes. And depending on how we project those shadows, we're going to get a shape here on the element. For instance, let's round everything up right here and look at that. That could be, I don't know, some sort of like sci-fi piece that we could find in some particular uh, like a cyborg or whatever, right? So that's Shadowbox. Once you're happy, you just turn that off and there you go. You have the access to this tool and we can continue working on it as if it was any type of geometry here inside of Seabrush. That's tool number two. Tool number three is one that I personally don't use as much, and I should. It's one of those things that can be very, very handy, especially, again, in sections like this one where we're still on the sort of like blocking phase of the elements. You remember this one from last year? We're going to have a contest soon, by the way. Like we're still thinking about the next topic, but it's coming soon. So this is, of course, Sculptrace. So Sculptrace is this mode over here. Some of you might have pressed it by accident. And it's an old version. Like Seabrush used to have this other software called Sculptrace. And what this does is as we use that brush, especially with tools that really change the silhouette or modify the silhouette heavily, they will modify how we change the topology on the element. For instance, if we go for a snake hook, right? Like that's probably the most common one. As we push the snake hook out, you can see that we generate more 
more and more triangles. It's kind of like using Dynamesh in real time. We can, of course, Dynamesh afterwards, and we're going to recalculate all that surface. But especially when you're playing with Silhouette, you're trying to think about how, what other things to add to a character, you know, the typical, like, spikes or things like that. Sculptor's Plark can really be a good way to quickly ideate and quickly generate these things. But that's not all. There are a bunch of brushes where Sculptist Pro can really help you. There's one that's called the Cactus Brush. So right here on the elements, you're gonna find it right here. It's called the Snake Cactus. And what this does is similar to the Snake Hook, but it's a little bit more aggressive. So it allows you to very quickly generate and draw all of this like tendrils and lines out of the surface of the element. Right now, of course, it's using this sort of like star or cactus-like alpha. You can change that alpha to something a little bit rounder if you just wanna have like tubes coming out. But again, since this is a sculptress and it's generating new geometry as we draw all of the tendrils, it allows for very quick ideation. Whenever you're in the design stage, in the very early stages where you don't care about topology and you're only worried about making sure that you have something that looks cool, then Sculptress Pro can really work. Now, the next tip actually has to do with this previous one where we want to modify like this big or long tendrils or elements, and that's using anchor brushes. I know we've mentioned anchor brushes before, but if you're watching this video, then maybe this is the first time you're looking or learning about them. So it's this guy's right here. And as you can see, we have move, rotate, move, rotate, like a bunch of them. If I click on this, the only thing I need to do is click one time, click on second time, and it's pretty much like adding a bone. See that? So by adding these two elements here with rotate, I'm rotating this element in a very sort of like smooth way, completely different than trying to go, for instance, um, let's say with our masking and then trying to rotate. This completely breaks the stuff, right? But anchor brushes are a very, very good way to, to generate like a soft change on our elements. We have things such as rotate, move, rotate. We even have scale, for instance, where we can make something a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller based on where we position those points. It's very, very good for posing. Those of you guys that are always struggling with posing your characters, I know there's a bunch of different ways to pose a character. We can use a rig or things like that, but sometimes even just doing something like this, right? Just like clicking here, clicking here, and just moving the whole hand down is gonna be a very quick way to position something. And then, of course, re-sculpt or modify a couple of the elements so that we get the best possible result. So. Don't sleep on anchor brushes. This next one can be, again, very handy if we're doing a lot of like hard surface stuff. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna use some of my uh, like knife brushes to just generate a shape that looks a little bit more interesting. I'm even gonna go with some like weird angles. So imagine having to model something like this inside of, again, Maya or Blender, and then your lead or someone tells you, hey, we need to bevel all of those edges with proper edge loop and everything, right? So that it holds like nicely. It can be a little bit tricky, right? Even if we go for some intense shapes, like for instance, a a circle right there, right? So if we want to add a bevel to this whole thing, again, traditionally, it might take a little bit of time to do so. But here, inside of the Subtool tab, we have a little bit of a hidden tool called Bevel Pro. So Bevel Pro is another little software that lives here inside of ZBrush that allows us to quickly use something similar to light booleans to generate the cuts that we need. Look at this. So it's very simple to control. We can change the bevel amount with this little slider right here. It's gonna update, and as you can see, it finds all of the edges of our element and once we're happy with this we can just hit for instance auto apply and just hit ok and there we go we're back here inside the seabrush with a very nice bevel there's more options that we can change but just being able to quickly get like these very clean bevels to of course later either 3d print this or bake them down into another like element or something is very very handy because i do not want to be in a situation where i need to find out or figure out the proper edge loop for those things in other softwares last but not least and talking again with this little figure right here, I want to mention a couple of polygroups options that we have, because imagine you have something like this, and as you can see, we have a single polygroup for everything, and we want to have a little bit more control. Maybe we want to do some extractions or something like that. Well, here in the polygroup tab, we have options to do that. First of all, we got this group front, which is really, really good, because as you can see, we can group all of the faces that are facing, well, front. We can bring this even down here on the angle. I'm going to try bringing this down a little bit more. There you go. And we can isolate specific sections of the element. Once you do that, we can improve bird the selection, right? Something like select rect, press control W again, and start like splitting stuff. But the most useful one, at least for hard surface stuff that I've found, is this one right here, groups by normals. So it has a max angle that we can change. If the max angle is really high and you group by normals, pretty much everything's gonna be grouped into the same element. But as you can see here, we can bring the angle quite down, let's say something like 12, and now if we group by normals, it will identify all of the faces that are in the similar like vicinity in terms of normals, right? Like facing ratio, and it will mask them accordingly. Look at that. So very, very quickly, we can separate all of these different panels. And again,
again, do things like panel loops or like uh, some extrusions or some cube meshing or whatever, because we have access to all of these different elements. It will have them by default when you use the knife tool. I'm just showing you this little tool right here because it can help you when you don't have those poly groups. Now, one last thing I want to mention in this video before we close it is the fact that there's so many little hidden tricks and tools inside of Seabrush itself, not only on the tools here, but also on the Lightbox. I don't know why they don't teach this more at schools, but Lightbox is not only a way for us to see a preview of our files. Like if you navigate to any place in your computer, you can find this thing right here. There's also a lot of ways or a lot of tools that you can use for your own projects. They're here for a reason. They're completely free for you to use as base meshes. Look at this. Are you doing some jewelry? We got rings right here. Are you doing any creature or animal? We got the whole sea suit that you can pose and move around. A lot of people, for whatever reason, they forget that these tools exist. And not only this, there's so many secret brushes here that unless you go in here and experiment and see what they do, you're never going to be able to tell like how they're working. Let me show you a couple that I really, really like. Like, see this edge loop right here, this polygroup thing that looks very, very weird? Well, here in the light box, if we go to the smooth brushes, there's a very cool smooth one that's called smooth and smooth the groups right here. If I double click, it's now been assigned to my smooth brush. And if I press smooth, I will smooth that polygroup. Have you ever had issues where you want to keep like a very clean polygroup so that you can extract or do something with it? Well, this is the way. Like again, imagine we just mask some area like, I don't know, like this, right? We control W to make a nice little sh shape. And then we can use a smooth to really clean that shape and look how nice and easy that becomes. Now that we can again, Q mesh extract or do whatever we want. Once more, smooth groups. Now, if like me, you're a fan of train dynamic and uh, hard polish and all of these things to do like hard surface or this sort of like beveled effect on elements, there's one more brush that's really good, especially if you're doing destruction. By the way, let me know here in the comments if you want me to do a video about sculpting rocks because I don't think I've done a video on this channel. And it's one of those things that I really like doing. It's it's relatively fun. But here in the brush section, there is a, especially, there's a special trim brush right here called trim smooth border, this one right here. This one. Is is really, really, really freaking good because it's a little bit stronger than the trim dynamic and you're gonna get these very nice angles and a lot of breakups on the silhouette of the element. So that's one of the other like secret brushes we can say because if no one tells you about it, you're never gonna know about it, you're never gonna find it, that can really push your stuff to the next level. Now this one's another that's a classic that a lot of people learn about, of course, the stitch brush right here. And the stitch brush has a specific parameter or settings that allows us to draw stitches, right? Something like this. Of course, if we have more subdivisions, we're going to get a nicer result. But the cool thing about this, and again, not a lot of people know it, is that you can change the alpha. <laughs> you don't need to use this specific alpha. You can use any of these alphas. For instance, if we're doing like an octopus or something and you want to create like all of those like bends, you can do it very quickly right there. If you're doing something a little bit more fancy, like some sort of like a trim sheet or whatever, this is a very cool way to just repeat the pattern and keep it going. So as you can see, guys, there's so many secrets within ZBrush. I wanted to make this video because I just like came up with this couple of elements that I think a lot of people might be missing. If you're new to ZBrush, then you might be missing this. If you're completely new to ZBrush and you want to check the course, of course, we have it on our site. But this is the beauty of the software. I've been using ZBrush for more than 13 years, and I still learn new little tools, new little tricks, new little pipelines every now and then. So that's it. Go enjoy, sculpt something cool, show it to us on the Discord. Don't forget, we're going to have Portfolio Review this uh, Friday. And don't forget, always learning, always improving. I'll see you in the next one, guys.